Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show for today, the 21st of November. Remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. Might as well be us. That's me dancing, but that's also you guys dancing. So first of all, I also got killed for every other lineup. I had two lineups that were not dead after that Hauser bomb. I don't want you guys to think I pivoted off him. I had 65% Hauser, but this lineup had only Pritchard, no Hauser. It was one of two that had only Pritchard, no Hauser. So I was dead to two. I watched a lot of football before I noticed, hey, this lineup actually has a chance. I was paying attention to Sengun News because I knew if I could get low-owned Sengun and Van Vliet, everybody was playing for a pivot there. Nobody was playing for both of them, and they were both definitely possible to smash. So I loved the way that was set up. If Sengun was ruled out, I didn't know what I was going to do. It was going to be a whole thing. Probably I could have taken advantage of Jabari value. But then I guess Steph, I would have had some random amount to pay up. Regardless, took down by 10, 15 points, the Mega 8 ticket again. Another 1,000 real money dollars as well. So football, I, I, 26, it's like right at the edge of congratulating the winners. So I'll let Fantasy Newsletter take care of the congratulations. I don't... It's a little bit below my threshold. So whenever something's like below my personal threshold for like, would I have been proud of a win? I don't want to call you out for the win. So no no offense to the people who won in NFL last night. Congratulations on your $60,000 or whatever. I did want to shout out though, we had a uh, so great of a player, took down a 333 ticket, but one, one catch away from another 1300. So I'm telling you, there's something in these high dollar satellites, guys. I think the satellite strategy can be really supercharged with the high dollar sat satellites. Um, it has been for me. I got like 7,000, more than that, 2,500 plus, no, $7,000 of tickets to be played through the next couple of weeks. It's going to be crazy. Now, for today's slate, it's easy. I mean, like if, if we're paying attention to pace and that's going to lead it, and it did yesterday in a big way, right? Milwaukee and Washington, we knew to be there because of pace. So today, there's one game that stands out. One game that stands out far and above the rest, and you should have it stand out far and above the rest in your projections. Atlanta versus Indian Indiana. These are two of the fastest teams in the NBA, literally the first and the third fastest team in the NBA. We can expect just an incredible amount of possessions. Like there's, you know, I was saying layup after layup for Washington and Milwaukee. These guys are shooting threes, man. They're, everybody's just, there's a lot. Uh, well, I mean, not Indian, Indiana as much as Atlanta, but you know what I mean? Like th this game is a game you got to have a lot of interest in. Beyond that, the Lakers, uh, Utah is the second fastest paced game. And then you get down to games that are just going to be a blowout. So Portland Phoenix, I'm going to get almost none of because it's probably going to be a blowout. And it's not, it, not only is it not fast pace. So Portland and Phoenix, Phoenix is 23rd and Portland is 25th on the list. Neither team plays fast. And it, we were getting to a high implied total for Phoenix because of the spread. No, I don't want either team, any of them. You don't want Kevin Durant. I don't want Devin Booker. Not today. I don't see it happening I don't see Portland keeping this close. If they do, y'all win that money. If somebody, if one of you wants to run those Sims, have have that portion of the Sim ROI, feel free. Not for me. Um, but everybody else is is appropriate. The line is appropriate for the uh, Philly Cleveland game. Toronto Orlando. No notes. That's about right. They're kind of middle to lower middle of the table teams, and you can expect a lower to low middle to lower the middle table pace. Now, this is the first time I've looked at what it gives me for the actual exposures. So we'll have to trim this down from 100% Keontae George to, you know, 65%, 70, 75% Keontae George, 70% maybe. I'll do 70% on Bruce Brown. I'm getting a lot of him because of the pace of that Atlanta, uh, Indiana game. I assume he's going to luck into a lot of stats. It's fine. I think that's fine. Okay. So then once we have 70% of those guys, we're set. I'm not going to have that much Nick Batum. Do we have... Do we really know what his rotation is like with that um, team? Uh, Batum stats. 24 minutes. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, excuse me. Sorry for doubting you, Saber Sim. 24 minutes for Batum is completely defensible. Doesn't feel right. Okay. They've got him. They've got him here for 45 minutes. Something's, something's fishy about that, obviously. We're not going to have Nicholas Batum playing 45 minutes. I can't be reading that right. I totally am reading that right, though. Anyway, he played a lot of minutes, but I he's still not going to get there for me on even on this slate. Like I I don't think so, just because 
I mean, he didn't score that many points in the last game, even though he had a lot of minutes. So let's go to people who can score points. Uh, yeah, I like all these guys. So I don't like 50% of Mo Wagner. 35% is fine. I haven't put in my my Wagner um, fork. Oh, yeah, let me tell you the rules. I haven't told you my rules yet. Pretty important for this slate. Pretty important. I have Miles foul trouble rule with Jalen Smith fork, Capella foul trouble with an Okongwu fork, and Pirtle foul, uh, foul trouble with a Precious fork. Any one of those that, you know, Precious and uh, Okongwu sometimes just close even without foul trouble. They just like the matchup better, so that's that's in play. Uh, I might add some two out of three guard rules as well. Probably not. I'm just running out of time to do stuff. We're, we're traveling today. Um, so, yeah, I'll run one more of these, but that seems like a eh, kind of meh core. Let me sh- uh, I'll rebuild the lineups one more time while I uh, point out what what values I see on the slate. Yeah, this is what I expected to see more of. I expect to see more Clint Capella. I expect to see more Jalen Smith. I expect to see more Precious. I expect to see more Pirtle. I expect to see more Okonwu. These backup centers are some of the best values on the slate, and everybody is going to Jalen Smith. While it's true that he will have more probably guaranteed minutes in a fast-paced game, I don't think you... There's no logic for him to be 20 times the ownership of Achua or, I mean, even Pirtle, right? Geez, that entire game, any big from that game, Okongwu 4%. There is the comp. So he's five times the ownership of Okongwu, who in the exact same circumstance for minutes is going to see good minutes, but not great minutes unless there's foul trouble. So just an example of, of guys who are just having ownerships that are a little out of whack. I'm going to get to no Batum, no Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon feels like a chase to me. He can get there. I mean, he got there before me yesterday. I don't know if he was in that lineup that got me all the money. It's very rude of me to immediately click no, no Eric Gordon, but no Eric Gordon for me. Definitely pay attention to whatever. I assume they're projecting Joel for 45 minutes or something weird too. And we'll have to fix that. Yeah. 46 minutes. So we're not going to get to whatever crazy amount of Joel this is because they're projecting him, him wrong right now, but that just happens. They run game Sims, something breaks, some guys aren't included, whatever they have to run it again. It's on us. It's on you, you and me to notice that though. Like this particular version of Saber Sim has way too many of Philadelphia for some reason. So something weird about the rotation it's it's not something i did to it this is something in the game sentence itself wow okay this is completely reasonable i don't really love evan mobley being core just because there's not a reason for it you know like with bruce brown there's the pace keontae george price is still adjusting to him being a starter but it's, it feels like with Embiid, right like what are we 33 minutes okay it's not a the minutes aren't being projected wrong so it's not quite the same thing but still i don't know bruce brown He's fine. Mobley, though, yeah. Mobley's the one where I got to kill him. He's just not always that aggressive, you know? Like, Mobley can go either way. Come on, kitty. Press buttons. 50 seems definitely like the most Mobley I want on this slate. I mean, 40, really, because I feel like I like most of the other big plays better. I guess most of them are centers, but... Yeah, getting to a lot of Matherin, but, you know, he's fine. He can go off. I just don't really want more than 35% Matherin, 35% Bay. Eventually, I'm going to have to rerun this again. I can tell this is cutting down my field too much. But yeah, just make sure you're you're comfortable with all your player exposures before you go to the, you know, <laughs> to, the, to the rim. Is that what I'm about to say? <laughs> take, take your CSVs to the rack. Slam them home. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where that enthusiasm is coming from. It's pretty early in the morning. All right, yeah, this is Keontae George, Bruce Brown, not D'Lo. I think it might have to be, might have to be Embiid as my last core. There's just no other, no other spend up who's going to give you that that range of outcomes that's so rocking. I mean, I guess you could go to either uh, LeBron, right? Because once we once we project Joel for like a reasonable number of minutes, LeBron and AD is being misprojected too. He should be the same as LeBron. AD and LeBron are a toss up at 55. I don't want to like, that's probably going to throw the whole slate out of whack. I'm going to have to say no more than 30% Anthony Davis or something, you know, but anytime you, anytime you break the slate, you should unbreak the slate. That's my general, if you're playing with projections and all of a sudden your projections have broken the slate, fix that. <laughs> you know, don't, don't let that hang out. Like that's not I, 15% LeBron James seems about his go off potential at this stage. And what 50%, 60%, 65 is fine for Joel. So now we're down to 0% Joel with a reasonable number of minutes. So I think, you know, it's fine to put him in for 65 maybe to for now to make sure I still get some. But it's uh, 
Huh. Somewhere between 60. All right. What about 62 and a half? I want, I want it to be a coin flip between him and uh, AD value wise. So 63. I'm looking at the value column and trying to make the number the same to two significant digits. Which it is now, but not, uh, which it is now. So I apply it and now I will get an even split. Hoorah. So that's how math works. Uh, welcome to the show. And by the way, thanks for joining me, all you guys um, who aren't winning every night, who did play Hauser or whatever, and only single entry or way, it ruined way too many of your lineups. You didn't get the Justin Watson move exactly right. Like I didn't. The end of that game was terrible. And that MV, you played MVS instead. You saw that catch. It didn't happen. You watched it happen. So thanks for sticking with me through the bad variants, guys. I Good, good days will be here again. They're here for me now in NBA. And if you keep if you play like this, they'll be here for you soon. So remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. And hey, some days it's us.